My name is Non Stop Antonio, and I recently saw the Super Mario Bros. movie, which means we need to talk about the movie itself and the shit ton of Easter eggs that are in it. Because this movie was chock full of music, items, gameplay, and everything you know from the Super Mario game. So in this video, we will talk about as many Easter eggs as I could notice, and I got a lot. So, let's jump into my review and easter egg breakdown of the Super Mario Bros. movie. Welcome to Nonstop Antonio, where I talk about everything nerdy. I love Marvel, DC, and anime, and if you do too, I hope you enjoy this video. We will start this off with the review because I feel like we need to talk about how good this movie was. The critics are saying it is a bad movie, however that's not the case. It may be a little bit fast paced and that's probably my only complaint is how fast it moved and pushed the story along. However, it was chock full of easter eggs, it brought back a lot of nostalgia, and the voice actors killed it. Chris Pratt, surprisingly, surprisingly, really good. Jack Black as Bowser was phenomenal. Anya Taylor-Joy as Peach was lovely. And it makes me want to see more of these characters on the big screen, and I think that's a possibility in the future. This movie is directed at kids. There's a lot of jokes that really didn't hit for me, but the kids had a good laugh in the theater, and I think overall it's a fun time. It's one of those movies you could turn on and just have a fun time watching, which I think is perfect for a Super Mario movie. I'm not expecting this huge big plot from it, because, again, it is a Mario movie. If you've played the games, a lot of them don't have, like, the most in-depth story. They're just a fun game you go through. You explore the Super Mario Bros. world. I'm hoping in the future we can get something like Galaxy, maybe Odyssey, or even my favorite, Super Mario Sunshine. One of the funny parts from this movie is how Mario doesn't like mushrooms, but we all know that Super Mario is heavily revolved around mushrooms because you have the Mushroom Kingdom, all the toads have mushroom heads, and you have to eat mushrooms to get power up. Which is a fun gimmick they had during the whole movie with Mario kind of feeling sick when he had to eat mushrooms, which I think was pretty funny, and I enjoyed that part of this movie. As well as everyone making fun of his height and his costume. Because in this movie, Luigi and Mario had a family, and they kept roasting him for their classic looks, which I think was great. There was also a scene that made me feel a lot of nostalgia for the games, and that was when tr Peach was training Mario because she set up this level for him to go across and he kept dying and dying and dying, which just reminded me when I was a kid of every time I tried to do a level and I would just mess up and die until I finally got it right and I could just blow through that level really quickly, which I think if you've ever played Super Mario, you know exactly what I mean. The Mario Kart references were awesome and the whole driving scene was great. It makes me really want to see a Mario Kart movie, specifically just to see them all racing and how they play with it, because what they did in this movie was really fun with Rainbow Road, the power-ups, and how they used the car customization. And then all the fights were great, like Donkey Kong versus Mario was a lot of fun, with Donkey Kong just making fun of Mario. I was kind of worried about Seth Rogen at first, but it wasn't actually that bad, because he even said that, when I'm a voice actor, I don't give a voice, it's just my voice. But it worked. It surprisingly worked. Then when we got to the end battle, we had Mario and Donkey Kong working together. And one of my favorite parts is that we saw Donkey Kong using a power-up, specifically the Fire Flower. And in the games, I don't think we've ever seen Donkey Kong get a power-up. It's only ever Mario, Peach, Toad, and Luigi. So I thought that was a pretty cool thing they added into this game. And it makes me want to see other characters with power-ups now. And then the final fight as well with Bowser was awesome. Watching Luigi and Mario get the star, be invincible, and have that music playing, and just absolutely kick the shit out of him. What a fun movie, and I can't wait to talk about all these Easter eggs I have written down. So let's jump into it. Right in the beginning of the movie when Bowser goes and takes over the Penguin Kingdom, all the penguins rushing him just reminded me of the Penguin Rush minigame from Mario Party 5. And I thought that was, if that is the Easter egg they were going for, I love it. I used to love that minigame when I used to play the game, so it was cool to see somewhat of a resemblance in the movie. Plus, when the movie started, they had the classic Mario music with the winning level sound. This movie is filled with classic Mario music from all the games, and it starts off in a pizzeria called Punch-Out Pizza, which is the classic Punch-Out game. And in the Punch-Out Pizzeria, there is a bunch of boxers on it from that game as well, which I think was a cool touch. And while Mario and Luigi are in the pizzeria, they're watching their Mario ad. I thought the ad was just for the movie. However, it was an ad for them in the movie, which I think was pretty cool. And they had their yellow capes, their classic from the video game, and just fun little things, adding little pieces from the video game into it. In the pizzeria, there's an arcade game for Jumpman, the original game that Mario first debuted in before it became Super Mario Bros, with Donkey Kong and Pauline. And later, we see a 3D version of Pauline because this news reporter is wearing the same outfit and has her hair done the same way, which I think was a cool Easter egg, and I'm not sure many people noticed. The voice actor of Mario from the video games is also in this movie, and he's dressed like Jumpman 
And he's in a couple scenes as well, like in the beginning, playing Jumpman. Mario's old boss, his name is Spike, is wearing the Wrecking Crew hat, which is a classic Mario game from the NES, where the player controls Mario and attempts to destroy all of a certain set of objects with a large hammer. On top of it, Spike is the main villain from that game. When Luigi's standing there, a GameCube ringtone goes off for his phone, which is the GameCube startup sound, and his contact picture is a me. When Mario and Luigi go to their first plumbing job, Mario runs through a control construction site that is designed like a classic level and when it ends he jumps on a pole and goes down it in front of Castle Burger just like how you would end every level in the side scroller when you're playing Super Mario Bros. The owners of the first job have a dog named Francis and I couldn't find anything specifically about the dog However, Francis is a video game obsessed chameleon in Super Paper Mario. So part of me thinks that this might be a reference to that because it has the same name and it would be a cool little reference. In Mario's bedroom there, Mario is playing Kid Icarus from the NES, and on top of his TV, there is a Star Fox Cruiser, and I think it's the R-Wing. Later, we see a building with the Duck Hunt bird on it, and it says, Chase Ukkanar. I'm butchering my French, but translated is Duck Hunt. Mario and Luigi later go into sewers, and it makes me think it's either the classic underground level from Super Mario's, or the underground level in the Luigi's Mansion. And while they're down there, it also plays the classic music from the underground, and I think there was a little mix of the Mario Sunshine beat in there as well. When we get to Peach's Castle, the, it is the classic look, and it's filled with a bunch of art like Mario 64, and when we see the castle and get there, it plays the Mario 64 music, which is just Peach's Castle's music. They also have a map that shows all the different kingdoms, which is like the map you would see when you're playing the game. And then like I said earlier in the review, Peach brings Mario into a level to train him, and it just has all the classic Mario pieces. The spinning part that I can't remember the name of, Bullet Bills, Piranha Plants, and just everything you'd see through a Mario level when you would want to complete it. And also when Peach and Mario go to base Bowser, the Toads don't want her to go, but she's gonna go anyways. And I saw this comic panel on Twitter, which shows Peach going after Bowser alone and saying she can deal with him, which I think if that is the nod to that, I think it's pretty cool. And I didn't know that until I was on Twitter and I saw the comic panel. And when Mario first arrived to the Mushroom Kingdom and they were walking through the town, there was a lot of little Easter eggs within it. There were coin blocks where Toads were getting coins from, which is like the classic video game where you would hit the block and get coins. There was a picture in the distance with a bunch of Toads on it, and it had Toadette. We didn't actually see Toadette, but there was a picture with her on it. There was a Toad shop that had Super Bells and Hammers from Koopas on it, as well as the gold coin with Yoshi on it that you would collect in levels, boomerangs, music blocks, and so many more things. And during this whole scene too, they just played the classic Mario music and played the classic Mario sound when you would go through a pipe. When Luigi gets sent to the Dark Lands, he has multiple moments that reminded me of Luigi's Mansion. Like when he's walking around, he's a flashlight and he's shaking just like he would when you're playing the game. I think there was some music as well, but I can't remember exactly which one it was. But I'm pretty sure there was music from that game as well. He also falls on a dry bone, which falls apart and then it reassembles itself back together. Which is like the classic way dry bones just puts itself back together after you stomp it. And the castle he runs into at the end is also just like a classic castle look from one of the ends of the levels when you're playing Super Mario Bros. We meet Toad for the first time and he has a backpack, kind of like Toad in Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Now let's talk about the power-ups, because we got a bunch of power-ups during this movie. We got the classic mushroom that makes you larger and stronger. We got the mini shroom that turns you tiny. Both Mario and Bowser got turned tiny in this. We had Catsuit Mario from Mario 3D World. We had Firefly P. Peach and Fire Flower Donkey Kong, which I thought was pretty cool. Peach also got the Ice Flower, which gave her ice powers. And Mario got the Tanuki suit, which they called a raccoon suit in this. And people gave me shit for calling it a raccoon suit. Can't wait to see how many people get mad about that. While heading to the Jungle Kingdom, they go through the Rock Candy Mines, which I thought was a cool reference. We also see Yoshi's Island and a bunch of Yoshis, which I think is a cool little hint that Yoshis are coming. And while they're walking down one of the paths, you can see one of the cannons in the background that you would normally use to skip levels which I thought was pretty cool. We also see them go through the Desert Kingdom and they reference the Ice Kingdom, which got taken over in the beginning. And on top of it all, we got the Ocean Kingdom. Also, while they're traveling, Mario gets a flashback to baby Mario and Luigi. So we see both baby Mario and baby Luigi in this. And we also see baby Peach and how she got to the Mushroom Kingdom, which is cool to see the baby characters. And I think it's funny that Mario and Luigi have been wearing the same outfit since they were babies. Peach also references that there's a huge galaxy out there, which I'm pretty sure is a reference to Mario Galaxy. And we also have a star locked up in Bowser's castle. And at first I thought it was Rosalina's star. However, Rosalina's star is yellow and this one was blue. But I do think it's a nod to Mario Galaxy and Rosalina. When we get to the Jungle Kingdom that's filled with Kongs, we have the Donkey Kong rap when DK comes out. 
We have Cranky Kong, and when Mario and Donkey Kong are fighting, the level is set up like the j classic Jumpman game, as well as giving me Super Smash Bros. Battle Arena vibes. Donkey Kong is his classic DK tie-in logo. Diddy Kong is in the audience. And this is also where we get the mini shroom and the cat suit power-up. And Donkey Kong uses his wind-up move from Super Smash Bros. And later we see Donkey Kong's classic hut. Which I think is just cool. We have all these Easter eggs from the Donkey Kong stuff as well. When we do get to Mario Kart, one of my favorite parts of the movie, they put together their carts just like how you as a player would in the game. Picking the different wheel, the glider, the cart itself which I think was really cool and a cool way to integrate that into the movie, as well as giving Peach and Mario some of their classic carts. Peach has her bike and Mario has the classic Mario Kart. Even when you're in the Jungle Kingdom, all the roads are set up kind of like Mario Kart, where they have they even throw a banana peel down to make someone spin out, and they use a launch pad for the glider. And then when we got to Rainbow Road, a lot of this was really cool because they had the wheels changed to like the hover wheels that would hold you to the track while it goes upside down. And they had all the classic moves too. We had a blue shell get thrown at them, a green shell, banana, and a bomb. You Even Mario drifting like you would in the game and jumping off one of the sides of Rainbow Road to get to another section, which is classic like when you learn how to do that when you're playing any of the Mario Karts and you jump from one section to another, which is I think a cool little reference to the Mario Kart games. Bowser has a wedding in this and Bowser is wearing his wedding suit and hat from Mario Odyssey. And he also gets a Yoshi egg for a wedding gift, which leads to the post credit scene. During Mario and Donkey Kong's assault on the Mushroom Kingdom to go after Bowser, Bowser. It was a lot of fun watching them go through the semi levels, defeating enemies by throwing shells at them and getting the power ups, and Donkey Kong getting a fire flower. And this is all happening while they're playing classic Mario music and Mario doing his classic ground stomp. And then he gets his Tanuki suit, which was a lot of fun watching him fly around with it. And this is also where they call it a raccoon suit. And then Mario getting dragged to the real world with all of the Bowser stuff in the Mushroom Kingdom made me think of Mario Odyssey in the city level which could be a reference to that, and I didn't think about that until the end of the movie. And then when Mario and Luigi become invincible from touching the star, it had the classic star music. There were a lot of Easter eggs, now it's time to talk about the enemies that were in it. We had Koopas, Goombas, Shy Guys, Bomb Oms, Chain Chomps, Piranha Plants. We see King Boo at the wedding, as well as King bob -omb. We had Bullet Bills, Hammer Bros, Green and Red Paratroopers, Spiny, Magic Koopa, Sledge Bro, Dry Bones, Rom Balls in the Mushroom Kingdom, Cheep Cheeps, Loopers, and Amare swallows DK and Mario, which is a giant eel, which we see throughout multiple Mario games. And we also see the Koopa Clown cars. But let's talk about the mid and post credit scene. Even though I thought the mid credit scene was gonna set up the plot a little bit more, it really didn't, but it was a fun little scene with Jack Black doing yet another sing-along showing Bowser singing about Peach. And he does this twice in the movie and as well, the earlier in the movie where he's playing the underground music for Super Mario Bros on the piano. And I find it funny that in this mid credit scene, they gave Tiny Bowser a tiny piano to play music and he's just singing for his love for Peach. And then the post credit scene is a Yoshi egg hatching in Brooklyn. But the Super Mario Bros are in the Mushroom Kingdom. So I'm curious to see what's gonna happen and if Yoshi's gonna be running around Brooklyn until Mario and Luigi find out and they have to go get him, which I think is really cool. I think it's fine and I can't wait to see what happens next because I do want to see Yoshi. I love Yoshi and I want to see him show up. The thing is with this movie, it sets up so many cool things for the future, mostly because now that we have it, it gives us the concept for what could come next, what Mario characters could show up. Because of the reference of Galaxy, we could see Rosalina. We, we know we're getting Yoshi. Daisy could appear at some point, and we could always have a movie where they go to Isle Delfino and do stuff from the Super Mario Sunshine game, and even see Baby Bowser eventually. Now, I think the possibilities are endless because of the amount of Mario characters that are out there. We have Waluigi and Wario as well, so we have all these characters that could show up at some point in time, and Bowser doesn't even need to be the next villain again. It could be any of these characters that we know and love from the Mario series. What did you think of the Super Mario Bros. movie? Did you have a great time watching it? What Easter eggs did I miss that you noticed? Because this movie had so many, it was hard to catch everything. There were so many. So let me know what your favorites were in the comments or the ones I missed. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed the movie and I enjoyed making this video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. It helps out the channel a lot. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.